When we last met, I didn't realize that you were the president of the campus secular society. No wonder you were so articulate. I might not have spent so much time witnessing to you if I'd known. Why would that make a difference? I don't understand why evangelicals always try to assimilate everyone they meet, in every situation. Even when I was a Catholic, I would never dream of forcing my beliefs on a stranger. I would have considered it rude. As an atheist, I am more than willing to defend my beliefs when they are under attack, but I never seek to impose them on anyone else. I concentrate on providing a safe and welcoming place for non-believing students on campus. Scripture commands us to witness to all nations and win souls for Jesus. But I don't understand why you atheists have to get together. If you believe in nothing, what do you have to talk about? Do you just sit around in silence? I get this question all the time. Let me respond with an analogy. Suppose you move to Scotland and discover that most people there believe in the Loch Ness Monster, and not only that, but worship it as a god. There are Loch Ness Monster worship centers on every corner. Every speech by a politician ends it with Loch Ness Monster Bless Scotland, and no one who doubts the existence of the Loch Ness Monster can be elected to public office. Part of the money you pay in taxes goes to support Loch Ness Monster worship, and you find yourself socially ostracized and regarded as stupid, evil and immoral because you don't believe in the Loch Ness Monster. Total strangers feel free to come up and shout in your face. The fool has said in his heart, there is no Loch Ness Monster, or to leave Loch Ness Monster worship material on your windshield, perhaps keying your car or peeling off your bumper stickers while they read it. Look, I've been to Scotland. Or at least I had a stopover once at Heathrow Airport. I know that Scotland is nothing like that. So do I please humor me for a moment and let me continue with the analogy. In this hypothetical situation, you would probably feel very lonely and isolated, and perhaps even threatened. You would seek out other people who felt the same way, and draw strength from numbers. You certainly wouldn't sit around in silence, you would have plenty to talk about, like what a crazy country you were living in, how to cope with it, how to try to make things better, and so on. You were trivializing God by comparing him to the Loch Ness Monster. I find that offensive. Actually, I think belief in the Loch Ness Monster is more rational than belief in a god, relatively speaking. One could posit a scenario in which a population of large marine dinosaurs survived in the lake up to the present day. In practice it's not possible, because the lake froze solid several times during the Ice Age. But at least it's a testable scientific hypothesis. However. We are going off on a tangent here. My point is not to offend you but to try and help you realize where atheists are coming from. As a Christian in the United States, you are in a position of privilege. It's difficult for you to realize what it's like to be part of the most hated and distrusted minority in society. In any case, atheists don't believe in nothing. We are all individuals but many of us have a humanistic outlook and love the challenge of thinking about important questions without falling back on the supernatural as a crutch. You are more than welcome to attend a meeting of our group and see some of the fascinating discussions we have. I have to get to class. Let's continue this conversation some other time. By all means. We may not succeed in changing each other's minds but I'm always happy to dispel some of the stereotypes people have of atheists.